DCEU needs major help. Hey, what's up, nerd fan? This is your boy, Gershon, and welcome to Into the Nerd, where we talk about comics, anime, science fiction, movies, and all of that. Now, if you like the content we're about to deliver right now, please make sure you like the video and subscribe so you can get updates for more videos. So, today, we're going to be talking about the DCEU, or the DC Extended Universe, and the state that it's in. And uh, for me, to be honest, I, I think it's actually in, in utter disarray. Um, not there's only a couple things that can really be done to fix it. But let's start at the beginning, right? So the first film in the DCEU, which was Man of Steel, which some people really liked, some people didn't like at all, and some people were right down the middle. I was kind of down the middle where I didn't like a lot of the things he did with the lore, Zack Snyder in particular, but um, I felt that a second film, Man of Steel 2, could be, you know, it could be used to fix it. However, even though it made more film, and more film, more money than the, uh, uh, Iron Man, it's it's contemporary in, in MCU in terms of starting the universe. Made more money. Warner Brothers considered it a failure because it didn't make as much money as the Avengers, which obviously it took more than a few films for the MCU to get to that billion dollar mark. And of course, that was also an ensemble film. So they did what DC loves to do, and that is to just inject Batman directly into it, which is why we got Batman vs. Superman, because there was supposed to be a Man of Steel too. Now, did Batman vs. Superman have to be terrible? No, it didn't. But it was, right? Because it took tons of things from, you know, Dark Knight Returns, Death of Superman, tons of different parts and just did it, put it together really good. And it really misrepresented Batman as not being very smart. He put to the world's greatest detective and that's what we got. And the Lex Luthor that we got, which was weird, the whole Jolly Rancher and the mouth thing, that was really weird. The fact that Clark could hear in like another country, but not hear his mother in Kansas, like all types of weird stuff they did with the characters and just a lot of uh, Doomsday being Zod and Lex Luthor's DNA. Really, like it really could have been a whole other, a whole other villain for, for Superman, right? It still could have been a Superman movie and then Batman could have just helped him defeat whatever enemy it was. It didn't have to be that. It didn't have to be some weird ode to like Dark Knight Returns, but whatever. That's what it was. It's the movie we got. And uh, Superman died in that movie. His second outing, and he's dead already. And nobody cared. Nobody cared because you didn't get a chance to know him in the first place. So, and you know, juxtapose that to, you know, in the MCU where, you know, Robert Downey Jr., his Iron Man died, but you got a chance to know him over so many films that people cared. People cared about it. I won't say everybody cared, but a lot of people, at least you understood why people cared because of how many times you saw him and how much more they delved into that character. So, moving forward from Batman vs. Superman, you have um, Suicide Squad, right? So, Suicide Squad is right after that, which apparently was supposed to be a rated R movie, but it got changed from a rated R movie to PG-13, and it was messed up because David Ayer makes great rated R movies, so the tone changed, and they had to like reshoot almost the entire movie, which came up with a pretty crap film. And then they did that once again. Warner Brothers going in and putting their hands where they, they really shouldn't, right? They shouldn't be, they, they butt in because Disney came out with Captain America Civil War, which wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't rated on. And so, oh my gosh, like, look, look at the rating in there. Maybe we can reproduce it if we just. Lighten it up, put some more jokes, but Suicide Squad isn't supposed to be like that. Which is why we got what we got, which is why David Ayer to this day is talking about, I have an a Ayer cut too, the original cut of my movie. It have, you know, but you know, there's probably not a lot of hope for that right now. There's probably not a lot of hope at all to see that. Then we have Wonder Woman, which was done very well. Very well. There's not really many complaints about that, except Patty Jenkins, like, uh, fighting scenes aren't her strong suit. However, telling a narrative about a strong female character um, while even though she's stronger, uh, faster, smarter than everyone else in a film, her, her light was not brighter because the other ones were dim. And she gave everyone else in there like the time to shine, but still her being her. It was literally the opposite of what Captain Marvel does in the, in the MCU. And we'll get to that when I make the MCU uh, equivalent 
of that video, right? So Wonder Woman was done fine. Then after that, you move to Justice League. And obviously, it's been widely publicized about what happened with that. Obviously, Zack Snyder had like that tragedy and he had to step away. But even before he stepped away, he had already pretty much created what the Snyder Cut is right now. And Warner Brothers said it was utterly unwatchable. Really? But what we got from Joss Whedon was watchable? I think, see, the common problem is Warner Brothers just really has no idea what they're doing when it comes to running this universe. They have no idea how to tell a cohesive story, which is the big thing. What was the direction, right? Like, the MCU is not perfect. But the one thing that I can give them is that they know where they're going. The DCU had literally, had literally no idea where they're going. But back to Justice League. We already see that did not go well. Critically, wasn't received well. After that film came out, they really stopped talking about um, Justice League because Cavill was out because he didn't want to, he wanted more money, didn't want to appear in a cameo in the Shazam movie. Batman was out, even though he was supposed to direct his own film and act in it. Then he had Matt Reeves direct the film and then he stepped away, right? So out of the, the holy trinity of DC, we only have uh, Wonder Woman left. And obviously um, Aquaman comes out after Justice League, which once again, James Wan made a very good looking film. But in terms of it being a good movie, not necessarily. And it actually had a couple plot holes that didn't make sense. You know, like how in Justice League, like he was already pretty much very well acquainted with um, Atlantis. And then in his movie, he had no idea what, like he really didn't know anything about Atlantis. But it doesn't make any sense because Aquaman actually apparently takes place after Justice League. So, yeah didn't make sense. It, it didn't, didn't make sense at all. And then, you know, what they did with Black Manta, which stuck to was a, a utter waste of Yaya Abdul Mateen, right? Just a utter waste, right? Um, but yeah, good looking. And then Shazam, right? And Shazam was actually a good movie. Like, it actually, it was very entertaining. Had a slow start. Started off really, really slow, right? Can't, can't doubt that. But, and, and they also, like, they did some weird stuff for the source material where they pretty much, like, interchanged some of Black Adam's story and put Dr. Savannah there instead. Either way, it was enjoyable, you know where they were going to go, and we had that infamous uh, Superman cameo at the end, which Henry Cavill said he didn't want to do, which kind of like led to him being ousted from the role and all that, right? Uh, amongst other rumored things. But, once again, now we have these movies, and where's the direction? Because after that Joss Whedon Justice League, everyone was like, are we, is there going to be a part two? Because it was supposed to be a part two to Justice League. There's supposed to be a part one and two. That was part of Zack Snyder's plan. But obviously he's not, he wasn't there anymore. And Joss Whedon just made a bomb. So they were like, are we even invested in the Justice League anymore? Right? So it's just random films coming out and getting contributed to a continuity that doesn't really make much sense. And then you have Birds of Prey, which was a movie made to cater to people who don't even read comic books. Because they did all, they pretty much, they called it Birds of Prey. It wasn't a Birds of Prey movie. And you had it was really a Harley Quinn movie, and they talked about her, had four other people in the back, and just crapped on <laughs> Renee Montoya, Huntress, Cassandra Kane just crapped on them, uh, turned Black Mask into I don't know what, right? Because he, that's a Batman villain. Like he wasn't like a misogynist. Like they just it, it was unrecognizable, and people didn't like it. Even the people, the audience that they were they were looking for, right? So now we have all of those movies. And how can they fix this? Because now this is a broken continuity. They're about to release the Snyder Cut. They're about to release the Snyder Cut. And everyone's like, my gosh, I can't wait for that to come out. And guess what? Me too. I think it's going to actually be a good movie. But what does it mean? Because they've technically already kind of moved past without his vision. So imagine that movie is, is great, what we, what we like, right? But then what does it mean? For Wonder Woman 1984, which is already, already coming out, already written, which already breaks continuity because in that, she's already a very public hero. But in Batman vs. Superman, she wasn't seen, she was only seen by Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor was the one to discover all the metas. The first time the public saw anything like that, according to what Zack Snyder already put, was the fact that in Man of Steel, when you saw all the, the, the uh, Kryptonians flying in the air with the Superman. That was the first time anyone had seen anything like that. But now Wonder Woman is going to kind of like break that. And even we hear rumors of JSA in the Black Adam movie. And it's like, okay, 
JSA is before Justice League, so there's a whole team of superheroes that came before Justice League, and nobody knew about that? What's going on? And then there's rumors for the Flash movie. And the Flash movie is supposed to restart everything. So all these movies we're about to see are about to not matter, because they said they're going to be using, like, Flashpoint, and they're going to, instead of using Thomas Wayne, they're going to have um, Michael Keaton's Batman. Okay. But it's like, so they're going to restart it, because that means they're going to, and they said that Ben Affleck's Batman is going to appear for the last time, and I possibly might get an HBO Max show, but that's, like, neither here nor there. But either way, what we know is this, from right now, they said this is going to be his last film as Batman. Okay. So you write him out. What are you replacing him with? What are they doing? So all these films are about to just not matter. The Snyder Cut will not matter. All these things will not matter. They're going to restart it. And the universe has really never even... It's been so short. But they're already rebooting the whole thing? This is kind of nuts. I think, honestly, the DCEU should just focus on making standalone films. I think the Batman, as much as people might not dig it, is going to probably do better than a lot of the other ones because Matt Reeves is just focusing on his part of the universe. I think if they just make standalone Superman films, Batman films, Wonder Woman films that just focus on just their stories, Warner Brothers would be hugely successful because right now they haven't come up with a cohesive story to really tell. They haven't been able to do it very well. And they're still trying to like tell this huge universe thing without but it's like the people who are writing it not really talking to each other it's really weird it's really really weird so i think they should really just focus on standalone films but if they are going to restart if they're gonna go that way and just restart the universe make sure that they don't just avoid everything that marvel was doing because it was like they tried their best to do everything the opposite of marvel hey let's make sure we don't have any end credit scenes even though those work to put little like nuggets of story. Let's make sure we don't give every character a movie. Why? That works because instead of having to introduce them in like an ensemble movie, you can actually have them have their own movie. We were supposed to get a, a Flash and Cyborg movie after Justice League bombed. We didn't get it anymore. What happened to that, right? And who knows if that'll happen now after everything that's happening with, with Ray Fisher, right? Who knows? So yeah, that's really my take on the DCEU. Like right now it's, it's kind of in shambles. And they're just adding more to a broken continuity without really fixing anything. So that's my worry. And I want it to be. I want it to be better. Because and, and, and yes, the DC does have some haters. Because when they say Captain Marvel is a better film than uh, Man of Steel, you know something's wrong. Right? That's, that's just utter bull. Right? But I really, I really want it to do well. But it's like Warner Brothers just keep on like, sabotaging them. So yeah, I'm just going to end it here. I believe that they can do well. I just think that they should just focus on standalone, like Joker. Even if it's an Elseworlds story, I think they're much better when they just can focus on one thing at a time. So yeah, let me know if you agree. Um, let me know if you're like, oh my gosh, I love the DCEU. It's like the best ever. Or you're like, no, they have to fix it. They have to. And if they do, tell me what you think your solutions would be to everything, all right? So until then... Keep reading your comic books, watch these comic book movies, and remember to enter the nerd.